Let's look at the things that you need to know about the engines during normal operation. We will start with the preliminary cockpit preparation. You are in the cockpit. The pilot non-flying ensures that all required checks written on the standard operating procedures, SOP, are performed before the application of electrical power. Engine, landing gear and wiper controls have been checked. External power is available. It's now time to power the aircraft. Power the aircraft. The FADEX are powered automatically for five minutes after the electrical power is applied to the aircraft and provide some engine indications on the engine warning display. After five minutes, the FADEX shut down automatically and all the engine indications change from normal to amber. Let's assume that all checks have been performed by the pilot non-flying. It's now time for the exterior inspection. On each engine, we check that the oil fill access door is closed and we verify the condition of the drain mast and the absence of leakage. We verify that the fan cowl doors are closed and latched. We verify the condition of the engine inlet and fan blades. On the right side of each engine, we check that the vent inlet is clear, the pressure relief and start valve handle access door is closed, the pylon access panel is closed. On this side, we also check that the turbine exhaust is clear. We are now back on the flight deck for the cockpit preparation. Verify that on the engine start panel the master 1 and master 2 switches are off. The mode selector is in the normal position. The thrust levers are in the idle position. Cockpit preparation is complete. The passengers are on board. The APU is running and we are now ready to start the engines. We will start the engines using the automatic engine start procedure. During the start sequence all the engine parameters are monitored, controlled and protected by the FADEX. In order to start the engines the engine mode selector must first be switched to ignition start. Start the engines. No, to start the engine, move the engine mode selector to the ignition start position. When ignition start is selected, the FADEX are powered again. This is indicated on the engine warning display by the indications which change from amber to normal. On the system display, the ECAM engine page is automatically presented for more engine indications. Let's look at the engine indications specifically. The first indications on the engine warning display is the N1 of each engine. Both indicators are identical. The green needle indicates the actual N1. This value is also displayed digitally. The white circle represents the N1 corresponding to the thrust lever position. The amber mark represents the maximum N1. This is the N1 that would be produced with the thrust levers fully forward. 
the beginning of the red area represents the max permissible N1. The rest of the arc represents the exceedance area. On the right side of the engine warning display, the thrust limit mode and N1 rating limit are displayed. This will be explained and demonstrated as the mode changes later in the module. The next set of indicators display the exhaust gas temperature, EGT, of each engine. The green needle indicates the actual EGT. This value is also displayed digitally. The amber tick indicates the maximum EGT, max EGT. Since the max EGT is different for starting, toga, flex, the tick moves automatically depending on the phase of operation. Note, the amber tick is not displayed during takeoff. The N2 indication is only displayed digitally. The fuel flow is displayed digitally for each engine. Let's look now at the indications on the ECAM engine page. The first indication displayed is the fuel used by each engine. Notice that there is a fuel used indication and the engines haven't been started. This is because this value is frozen at engine shutdown and reset on the ground at engine start. The next indications are the engine oil quantity, the oil pressure, and the oil temperature. Vibration indications are displayed on the right-hand side of the ECAM engine display. There are additional indications displayed during engine start on the ground. They are only displayed when the engine mode selector is in the ignition start or crank position. They are the start valve position indication, the air pressure available for start. We will start the engines using the available APU bleed as indicated on the memo and the pressure indication at the bottom of the system display. We start engine 2 first because the yellow hydraulic system engine driven pump is on engine 2 and the yellow system supplies park brake pressure. Switch on engine 2. The corresponding start valve opens. This is indicated by the start valve indication changing from green cross line to green in line. The fuel used is reset to zero. On the engine warning display, N2 increases. It is displayed on a grey background. On the ECAM engine page, the oil pressure increases. At 16% N2, an igniter is powered. The active igniter is indicated by a letter, A or B, on the ECAM engine page. Note, the igniters alternate on successive starts. At 22% N2, the fuel starts to flow. We can see the indication on the engine warning display. 15 seconds after fuel is on, EGT and N1 increase. At 50% N2, the start valve closes and the ignition is switched off. 
Notice on the ECAM engine page, the start valve is closed and the igniter indication disappears. N2 continues to increase. At approximately 58%, it stabilizes and the grey background disappears, indicating that the start sequence is finished. Engine 2 is now running and all its parameters have stabilized. Notice the thrust limit mode has changed to TOGA and today the N1 rating limit is 94.1. As soon as one engine is started, the gross weight is displayed on the ECAM engine page. Let's start engine 1 now. We will show you the full sequence without stopping. Start engine 1. Start valve opens. Fuel used is reset. N2 increases. Above 16% of N2, an igniter is powered. Above 22% of N2, fuel flow begins. EGT increases. When N2 reaches approximately 50%, the start valve closes and ignition is switched off. At about 58%, N2 stabilizes and the grey background disappears, indicating that the engine 1 start sequence is finished. For both engines, all parameters have stabilized. The last action is to switch the engine mode selector to normal. Switch the engine mode selector to normal. On the system display, the ECAM engine page is replaced by the ECAM wheel page. Note, after start, to avoid thermal shock, it is recommended that the engines are operated at or near idle for at least two minutes. This ends the engine automatic start sequence.